Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. Diophantine equations usually have integer solutions. Sometimes they have rational solutions. In this case, we are looking for integer solutions to the equation x plus y equals x minus y squared. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first method. For our first method, I'm going to go ahead and square what's on the right hand side and set it equal to x plus y. Now I want to put everything on the same side. Let's subtract x plus y. And now I want to turn this into a quadratic equation. You can do it in two dif different ways because of the symmetry that we have. Obviously x and y are completely interchangeable. We can just go ahead and do it in the two different ways, but I'm gonna go ahead and write it as a quadratic in x. So let's go ahead and write this as x squared minus, I do see the coefficient of x is negative two y and negative one. So I can put those two together like this, and then the rest is just gonna be constants. In this case, since we're solving quadratic in x, uh, y is considered a constant. And now we can use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula gives us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 2y plus one squared, minus four ac, which is four times y squared minus y. And all of that is divided by two a, which is two. So that's what the quadratic formula gives us. Let's go ahead and simplify what's under the radical. So we get 4y squared plus 4y plus 1 minus 4y squared plus 4y. And then the whole thing is divided by 2. Here we can go ahead and cancel out 4y squared. And inside the radical we end up with 8y plus 1. So x equals 2y plus 1 plus minus the square root of 8y plus 1 and all of that is divided by 2. So we're looking for integer solutions which means 8y plus 1 needs to be a perfect square so it needs to equal an integer squared. Let's go ahead and set 8y plus 1 equal to or square root of 8y plus 1 equal to an integer. From here we get 8y plus 1 equals z squared, where z is an integer. Now notice that z squared is odd, therefore z is odd, right? Otherwise, if z is even, then its square would also be even. Since z is odd, I can kind of write it in a nicer way. Let z let z equal 2n minus 1, where n is another integer because we can express odd integers as 2n minus 1, where n is an integer. And this will be very helpful. That's, there's a reason why we use this substitution, because we're going to square it, and now we're going to simplify this expression. So let's go ahead and replace z with 2n minus 1 here. So we get 8y plus 1 equals 2n minus 1 squared which is 8y plus 1 equals 4n squared minus 4n plus 1. Now the 1 cancels out, so that's kind of nice. And then we can divide both sides by, f um, I was going to say 4, but 8 is better. Uh, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 8, because we want to get solve for y basically, right? And since this is 4 times that n squared minus n, we can divide the numerator and denominator by 4 and this gives us n squared minus n divided by 2. So that is the y value that we get from here and by way of substitution we can go ahead and find x. There's a couple of ways to go about it. You can find z if you want but that's not needed. Um, you can just go ahead and directly substitute the value of y here and find x from there. But notice that you're going to get two different values of x and it doesn't matter because depending on which values you substitute uh, you'll get the same answers. But anyways, let's go ahead and plug it in into the expression. So let me rewrite um, the result that I got from the quadratic formula. x equals 2y plus 1 plus minus the square root of 8y plus 1 and that is divided by 2. Now we're going to substitute 
this here. We're going to replace y with that in our equation. Let's go ahead and do it. 2y is going to be n squared minus n. Then I have to add 1 to it. And then plus minus, the expression inside the radical is just going to be 8 times that. So I'm going to have to multiply that by 4 and then plus 1. Notice that the expression inside the radical, of course, um, becomes a perfect square. And that is actually 2n minus 1 squared, right? That is the expression that we have under the radical. So we can go ahead and just um, plug it in. Uh, square rooting will give us the same thing pretty much uh, with the plus minus sign. So I can kind of write it like this. Okay. And now we've got to split it up at this point. Let's go ahead and split it up. Let's take the plus sign first. If you use a plus sign, we get this plus 2n minus 1 over 2. Notice that 1 cancels out. Negative n plus 2n is going to give us n squared plus n divide by 2. So that is the x value. And when we do our second method, uh, we're going to get something similar to this. So you'll, you'll notice that in a little bit. So that is the x value. But we're two, uh, we have two solutions. Let's go ahead and write the other one. And then at the end, I'm going to write them as ordered pairs. And now we're going to use the minus sign. That's going to negate everything inside the parentheses. And we're going to get the following. Here we have uh, nothing cancels out. It becomes n squared minus 3n plus 2 all over 2. Now, I want you to notice uh, something here. n squared minus 3n plus 2 is factorable into n minus 1 and n minus 2. And n squared plus n is factorable into n times n plus 1. So those are consecutive integers. There's a reason behind that. You'll see that in a little bit. So since we got a single y value for these x values, let's go ahead and write the result uh, as two ordered pairs. So on one hand, I have n squared plus n over 2 you know, the first solution for x, along with the y value, which is n squared minus n over 2. And then on the other hand, I have, I don't have to use a set notation here, just express the solutions. And on the other hand, I have the same x value because, well, actually, the x value is going to be different. Y value is going to be, y value is going to be the same. So I have the other x value, which is this one right here. And the y value is going to be unchanged because that we found the y value first, remember, uh, and and then we used it to find the x values. And that's why uh, it's quadratic. That's why we got two different solutions. But if you plug in some numbers, you're going to notice that there is an overlap between the solutions. OK, so that basically brings us to the end of the first method. And let's go ahead and talk about the second method. My second method is definitely shorter and it's a really cool method. But guess what? It doesn't always work. Sometimes it does work nicely. So it's a really cool method. Uh, obviously, turning it into quadratic uh, equation is kind of like a more general method. That's why it's I wanted to show you that first. But anyways, here I'm going to use substitution and it's very, very powerful. Hopefully you're going to realize that. I'm going to replace x minus y with k. k is an integer, right? So there, it, since x and y are integers, their difference is also an integer. And by this substitution, I get the following. Since x minus y is k, x plus y is going to be k squared. And let's go ahead and copy that here. And now we get a system of equations, which is super duper easy to solve, right? You don't have to get into any quadratic stuff. So let's go ahead and add these equations side by side. We get 2x equals k squared plus k over 2. And if you divide both sides by 2, you get x schools. Okay, I kind of like ahead of myself. I already divided by 2. So 2x was, was going to give us k squared plus k. And then after division by 2, we get x equals k squared plus k over 2. So that's going to give me the x value in terms of k. And I can go ahead and substitute into one of these equations. For example, the first one. If you substitute the x value from here, you're going to get y equals k squared minus k over 2. Now, why does this give us only 1? Because the issue is you can go ahead and write this k squared plus k over 2, comma k squared minus k over 2. And obviously, you can also switch them around. But that doesn't matter because depending on what k value you use, suppose, I'll give you some examples, suppose k is equal to 5. Uh, this is going to give you uh, 5 squared plus 5, which is um, 30 divided by 2, which is 15. And if you plug in k equals 5 here for, for y, so this is going to give us, uh, maybe I'll write it as an ordered pair. Uh, the first number uh, represents x and the second rep number represents y. So I'm going to write it like this. x equals 15 for k equals 5. 
and then for k equals 5 we're going to get 10 for the uh, y value now uh, suppose x is equal to 15 what is y always going to be 10 you can also test this out what if x is equal to 15 then you can kind of set this equal to 15 but guess what from here you're going to get two solutions because k squared plus k equals 30 has two solutions one of them is just going to be 5 the other one is going to be negative 6 and by substituting negative 6 for the y value since y is equal to k squared minus k over 2 you're going to get 36 plus 6 uh, which is 42 divided by 2 it's going to give you 21 so there is a way to get the, all the solutions and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye